Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Paul's for the first, first communion mass. A reminder that during this mass, please no photography, no videography. There will be a video taken and posted to the website. Thank you. Our processional hymn in, is on the second page of your program, page number two. Lord, who at your first Eucharist. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of the risen Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate uh, a sacred moment in the history of our parish. Every year we initiate into the Holy Eucharist some young people of our parish. Uh, people who are hungering for Jesus, and today their hunger will be satisfied and never completely satisfied because we always 
our wanting Jesus, and he is always there to nurture us. So today, he feeds these children and all of us, the children for the first time, and all of us for uh, the umpteenth time, okay? And he will continue to feed us in his word and in his body throughout our lives. Dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> let us humbly beseech the Lord our God now to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a, a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers. And for us who recall the wonderful work of our creation, and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. For you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through your water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan River, <clears throat> you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You come back when we can. Our hymn during the rite of sprinkling, sprinkling is baptized in water at the top of page three in your program. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Please say amen. 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 Let us pray. Oh God, you have accomplished the work of human redemption. 
through the Easter mystery of your only begotten Son, graciously grant that we who confidently proclaim under sacramental signs the death and resurrection of Christ may experience continued increase of your saving grace through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Lord, in your mind and on my lips and in my heart. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he knew himself what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves and had more than they could eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. What's your favorite cookie, kids? What's your favorite cookie? Just raise your hand. Let me know. Yes. Okay, that's not a cookie, but it's as good as a cookie. <laughs> M&M, is that what you, oh, well, cookie with M&Ms in it, of course. Yes, how could I forget? Yes, okay. Um, yes, we put all kinds of things in cookies these days. Yes, what's your favorite? Chocolate chip, okay. How many like chocolate chips? Probably a rather large number of you. Okay, what's your favorite cookie here? Anybody else? Your favorite cookie? Oreo. Oreo? Okay, Oreo. The regular chocolate Oreo or the new fangled <laughs> Oreos? Regular chocolate, okay. Oatmeal raisin, ah, the healthy choice. Okay, <laughs> good. Well, good for you. Keep eating those oatmeal raisins, cookies. You'll live longer. 
Okay, then the ones with the M&Ms. Okay, yes, which one? Oatmeal raisin also. Okay, good. All right, one more. Double chocolate, double chocolate, okay. Good. All right, so cookies are pretty, um, pretty good all the time, aren't they? And everybody has their favorite. I have a very simple cookie here, okay? This cookie is made by Keebler, okay? And it just has eggs, butter, sugar. Well, what's a cookie without sugar, okay? Except now they do make them without sugar, which is good for some people. Um, and wheat flour and a little extract of vanilla. So five ingredients in this little simple cookie. And uh, when I was little, younger even than you, four or five, this kind of cookie became my favorite cookie, okay? Now, it didn't look like this. So about 10 years ago, I could actually find the cookie that I ate 68 years ago as my favorite little bot cookie, okay? But they don't sell them anymore. And I think that this cookie has exactly the same ingredients in it as the one I found to be my favorite, uh, except for, I'm not sure there was vanilla extract in it, okay? So, um, but anyway, the cookie that I enjoyed most was the one my mother made, okay? And she did make them a lot, which was really nice, but she didn't make them all the time. So we had to have uh, a substitute, and that was that little vanilla cookie, little uh, wafer, butter wafer that I just held in my hand, except it had uh, little serrated edges, made it look like um, a daisy, a flower, you know, like it had petals. Some of you uh, grandparents or maybe great-grandparents by now might remember this cookie. Okay, it had a little hole in the middle, okay? It had little designs on it. It was just a very simple cookie. And in those days, there were only simple cookies, okay? We didn't have M&Ms yet even to put in our cookies. So, um, and, and I don't think chocolate chip cookies had been invented even. So, but anyway, very simple cookies. All of them very simple, and I love that cookie. And for, we always had them in the house. For some reason, I thought that cookie was mine, okay? And um, when friends would come over, my first friends were my cousins. Cousins are good friends, aren't they? Cousins, my first friends were cousins. I had 40 first cousins on my father's side alone. And when I was born, there were already some of them, and they were, some of them were my age, lived close. We would get together and mom would always give us a treat. And I remember the first time that she didn't have a homemade treat, she brought out these cookies. And I got anxious, because they were mine. They were my cookies. And I expressed that fact to my parents, to my mother. And she, of course, objected and said, no, you're going to share these cookies. So she said it with a tone that I wasn't going to argue with her about, okay? So we had cookies, and then later my parents, both of them, had a little conversation with me to remind me there was nothing in our house that we wouldn't share. A little lesson for a five-year-old, about a five-year-old boy, okay? And some of you have probably learned this lesson, too. In fact, you all have, from your parents, as I did that we need to share what we have, including our cookies, including even the M&M cookies, okay? Um, and your parents have taught you about sharing because they have shared everything with you. They gave you life. Through their love for each other, they gave you life. And then when you were born, they fed you. Mom may have given you her milk, okay? Your parents both have made sure you have had enough to eat a house to live in, clothes to wear, beautiful clothes today, huh? Beautiful clothes. Um, when you got sick, they took you to a doctor. They've been giving you an education at home and then in school, okay? Your parents have given you everything. They have shared everything with you. And where did your parents get all of this? Where did your parents get all of this? This might be worth an answer or two, okay? Where did your parents get all of this? Where did it come from? Where did all 
that we have come from. Heaven, right. And who lives in heaven? God. Okay, good. All right, I was expecting maybe some round the, beat around the bush answers there. Like mom and dad worked for it or something like that. Good. Ultimately, God gives us everything. God gave your parents everything, give, has given you everything, me everything, all of us everything. And um, God is a giver. God is a sharer. Think about it. God created the universe and he owns the universe. He owns the universe. We don't think of it that way. We don't think that he owns the universe because he doesn't make a big deal out of it. But he, he has all the resources of the universe, and yet he continues to give, to give, to give. That's all he does is give. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit give to each other. God gives to us, his creatures, made in his image and likeness. And the greatest gift that God gave us was his son. What is his son's name? What's just the simple name of his son? What's the simple name of his son? Yes, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Jesus, the anointed one, the Messiah in Hebrew. Jesus, the greatest gift the, that God can give. He gave Jesus to be like us, to be a human being, to share our life, and then to share his life with us. Share his life with us. And when Jesus walked the earth, he was a giver. He gave healing, he gave nurturing, food, he, he nourished people like in today's gospel. People were hungry, and he found a way to give them food. This little boy had some food, and Jesus found a way to make that for many thousands of people to eat. A giver, Jesus is a giver. And at one point in his life before he died, he gave us a special gift that is very important for us today, that we celebrate today. What was the event, boys and girls, at which Jesus gave us this gift? The Last Supper. Very good, the Last Supper. So at the Last Supper the night before he died, Jesus gave himself to us in Holy Communion, which you will receive today for the first time. He gave us himself, not the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ when the priest prays over it, when we pray over it, when the priest prays over it in your name, the name of, of Jesus, in the place of Jesus, when the priest prays over that bread and wine, it becomes the body and blood of Christ. That's our belief, it becomes the body and blood of Christ, a gift for all eternity to those who are willing to accept it, which you are, boys and girls, you're willing to accept it. That's why you're here. Your parents have accepted the responsibility of raising you up in the faith, the responsibility they took on when they had you baptized. And today, they continue to encourage you to accept the gift of faith. And this is another step in accepting that and receiving for the very first time Christ, Jesus Christ, into your bodies, into your stomachs, into your hearts, okay? And so God is a giver, a sharer, and the Eucharist is meant to be eaten, but it also is a reminder, eaten and drunk, okay? You know, we drink it and we eat it. But it's also, the Eucharist is also a reminder to us to be a giver like God himself, to be givers, to be generous. You know that word, generous? To share our cookies, to begin to share when we're real little, you know, when, uh, you know, you're big kids now, but when you were just real little, you learned how to do that, didn't you? Not to be selfish, not to just have the toys for yourself or anything else just for yourself, but be willing to let somebody else have a part of that. And so, Holy Communion reminds us of how important it is for us to give as well as to take. 
It's okay for a kid to take, okay? Keep taking. But as you grow up, start giving a little more, a little more, a little more. Hopefully your parents give you a really good example of giving, of sharing with your neighbors, with the poor, especially with the poor, okay, with anyone who is in need, the sick, to visit them, comfort them, all right? And so um, Holy Communion is something that is a tremendous gift from God who is always giving. And he gives himself, him very, his very self, in this sacrament, his, the, his son. He gives himself through his son in this sacrament. And we are called also, this is what the challenge is for us, not just to receive that today, but to be able to live out the meaning of the Eucharist. And the meaning of the Eucharist is its gift. And just as we receive this gift, we have to, in turn, like God, be givers. My brothers and sisters, let us gather together our prayers now and offer them to our Heavenly Father. That the church may continue to proclaim the saving work of Christ, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the world may embrace the good news of Christ and his message of salvation, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are oppressed may find their crosses lightened by our assistance as we imitate Christ, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our community may bear witness to Christ always by our works as well as with our words, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may be granted eternal rest, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Dear God, you have given us the gift of baptism. Today you give these young people the gift of First Holy Communion. Help us all to learn from you how to share all that we have. We make this prayer in the name of the risen Christ who lives forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn during the preparation of the gifts is Open My Eyes at the top of your program on page four. Open My Eyes.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands. Celebrating the memorial of our salvation, we humbly beseech your mercy, O Lord, that this sacrament of your loving kindness may be for us the sign of unity and the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord, the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wonderful sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Frederick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed to be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
My friends, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Our communion hymn is on page six of your program, Come to the Banquet, <clears throat> page six of your program.
please be seated for our canticle of praise. It is Sing a New Song on page seven of your program. Sing a New Song. Let us pray. <clears throat> May sharing at the heavenly table sanctify us, Lord, we pray, so that through the body and blood of Christ, the whole family of believers may be bound together through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father Dave and Father Michael and Deacon Mickey and Deacon Carl, join me in congratulating all of our first communicants and their families. Let us offer our congratulations to them. When we receive Holy Communion, uh, the Lord says, I love you. 
probably in the most magnificent and blessed way that he can to us on this earth. And so I encourage uh, the parents to make sure that it's a priority for you to bring your children to Mass every Sunday, every Saturday night or Sunday, so that they can receive this blessed sacrament and receive this uh, act of love uh, on the part of God that he wants to give to them. Please, please do that. My dear brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. May he turn his countenance toward you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.